Jones talking about whether you think American Family Association ought to hang in there and keep fighting the good fight, or we should, should we quit and give up like some other very well-known Christian organizations have done? Let's go to Ann in Little Rock, Arkansas. Ann, welcome to Focal Point with Brian Fisher. What do you think? Well, I think you shouldn't give up. I wouldn't want you to, and I, I couldn't stand it if you do because I've just learned so much from all the programs, and it's worth fighting for, and if we don't, and if you don't, then who will? And all right, so, Ann. Okay, thank you. thank you very much for that. I appreciate that. You know, and that's a good question. If we don't, who will? I mean, we're starting to run out of pro-family organizations that are willing to take an unapolog- uh, unapologetic stand on some of these issues. You know, it's interesting. I was on the BBC radio on Friday morning. I tweeted out a link to it. Uh, so if you're on the Twitter feed, you would have got that. Uh, listen to it if you wanted to, not that anybody's obligated to do it. But just a reminder to get signed up on my Twitter feed. That's Brian J. Fisher is my handle. Just go to Twitter, get an account, and sign up to follow me, and you'll get late-breaking stuff. I send you stuff out a lot of times as I'm doing show prep so you can see what I'm thinking about, what I'm focusing on, what I might be talking about on the program. Brian J. Fisher is my handle. Anyway, you know, BBC called here, and they're talking to Cindy Roberts, who's our media uh, liaison. And <laughs> they say, look, we've got this panel discussion on same-sex marriage, and we're looking for somebody who will come on and defend uh, – uh, man woman marriage traditional marriage they call it i call it natural marriage uh and 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 she said now now before i go any further ha- have you have you guys as an organization have you changed your stand on gay marriage because they're aware that other groups and other evangelicals have and cindy just laughed and said no now we're not we haven't changed our position on gay marriage at all in fact we never will Let's go to Susan, Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Susan, welcome to Focal Point with Brian Fisher. What do you think we ought to do, stay in the fight or give up? I think why would we give up? Because that would be like saying let's throw our kids to the devils themselves and allow them to be devoured. And I just can't imagine. I think ASA needs to have a tenfold increase in their listening audience so that um, the voice of truth is being heard. You're one of the truly conservative voices that are left out there there's not there's not very many out there that are giving a true conservative viewpoint anymore um so you know and you was asking about you know if we as we get older do we get more conservative i think we do as we get older we mature but you know um i also think that i when i was younger i i was very conservative too and i also see a lot of, the, I think there's an army of youth that is rising up or that is being prepared anyway for the future. Don't know where that's going to go, um, but just in hearing a lot of them talk, um, I hear a real fighting spirit, a real, um, I don't know, I don't want to call it an angriness that, you know, about their country being stolen. And mm-hmm. um, so anyway, I just think, no, we need to stay in the fight. We need to increase the fight. We need to... Uh, somehow get AFA out there in greater volume than what they are now. All right, Susan, thank you. And by the way, uh, I'm going to, uh, looks like I'm, I'm tentatively scheduled to speak at a Tea Party event in Cape Girardeau in either February or March, so I'll keep people uh, uh, apprised of that, but love to see you at that event if I happen to make my way up there. Thank you, Susan. I appreciate that. Let's go to Wally in Brunswick, Ohio. And by the way, before I bring Wally on, you know, talking about uh, the the millennials, you know, we've had a number of families that call in here and say, look, we use kind of focal point as part of our homeschool curriculum on public policy and American history and civics and the Constitution. Uh, And I've gotten emails from families who listen to focal point with their teenagers in the car. And the teenagers don't complain when it's on. They'll actually look for the signal for focal point when they're in the car. Uh, and we're getting calls from from other families that that are uh, and and from from young people themselves that I say, look, I'm conservative. I believe in marriage, and I'm going to fight for what we believe in. So I think it's just way way premature to think that the younger generation, the millennials, 18 to 29 year olds, are gone, and there's nothing we can do about it. I get proof every day that we've got millennials that are tracking right with us. Let's go to uh, let's go to Wally. Wally, welcome to Focal Point. What's on your mind? Uh, thanks for taking my call, Brian. I appreciate yes, sir. it. Uh, no, it's on my mind. We got to fight the fight. There, there's no doubt about it. Look, my folks came from from uh, Ukraine during the oppression under communism and stuff. And if we allow the black robes to dictate, you know, what the people want, then it's the same thing. I mean, that's that's absurd, you know, to me. 
Thank you for taking my call. Okay, Wally, you bet. You know, and uh, Wally's folks come from the Ukraine. Reminded me when I uh, helped organize the first Tea Party event in Idaho, the first guy we had speak at it was a guy that was from Hungary, I believe, or maybe it was the Czech Republic. I forget exactly where. Uh, but this was 2009, right after President Obama had basically nationalized uh, General Motors, government motors, and kicked out the CEO and brought a guy in who admitted he didn't know anything about making cars. Uh, and this guy said, look, the reason I'm here speaking at this Tea Party event is that I left Hungary to get away from this. I saw what happened when you had the government exercising dictatorial control uh, over business and over private enterprise. It kills it. And I left to get away from that. And now I'm seeing the same thing happening here. Let's go to T.C. in Oklahoma. T.C., welcome to Focal Point with Brian Fisher. What's on your mind? Thank you, Brian, for taking my call. Yes, ma'am. I appreciate AFR. I really appreciate it. I am so glad that you all are a voice that's crying in the wilderness. Well, thank you for that. And, and that so we, this is a spiritual warfare. This is not against flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. This is a spiritual warfare, and we have to every day have on that full armor of God. You know, and what that reminds me of, what that reminds me of, T.C., is, you know, what happened with Elisha back in uh, 2 Kings chapter 6, where his servants out there looking at the surrounding armies who come just to get the one guy. They're just there to get Elisha, and his heart just melts inside of him. He just sinks inside, says, man, we are doomed. Yes. And Elisha asks God to open his eyes, yes. and God does. And what he sees is in the mountains surrounding the chariots and horses that they could see were all of these horses and chariots of fire that represented the army of heaven, the armies of God. And Elisha said to Gehazi, look, there are more that are with us than are with them. Those that are with us are greater than those that are with them. So I think that's part of it, TC. Part of the reason we can get discouraged is if we forget that we've got the Lord of a host, the Lord of the armies of the heavens who's fighting for us. Absolutely. And he says, when you've done all to stand, just keep standing. Yeah. He didn't say after you've done everything, roll over and quit. He's yeah, after done everything, and, keep on standing. All right, yeah, TC. see the salvation of God. Amen to that. Well, thank you for that call. I appreciate that. Great word. Let's go to Billy in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, Billy, you're welcome to Focal Point with Brian Fisher. What's on your mind? Hey, Brian, I just wanted to give you a, a, a word of encouragement. Uh, you know, the Lord said he would go before us and fight for us. And it says there's more than one scripture in the Bible. Uh, <clears throat> I wonder how many people really are into the word so deep that they understand what really happened with, with Hurricane Sandy. Now, what do you mean? Well, in Job uh, thirty-eight twenty-three, it says, I have reserved these things for a time of trouble, for battles and for war. You know, the Scripture said that the Lord is a warrior, mm -hmm. and he will go before and fight for us. Mm -hmm. This is a spiritual war. This is not about flesh and blood. This is about spiritual. Yeah. And... Uh, all right, well, listen, I appreciate that, Billy. Thank you for that. And, you know, several callers reminding us of the truth that this is a spiritual battle. You know, back to Sandy just for a minute. Um, you know, there was a Jewish rabbi that suggested, you know, you had all these people out there saying, hey, Sandy happened because it's the environmental gods, it's Gaia judging us because we've ignored her. We've mistreated her. We've mistreated the earth, and the earth is fighting back. We ought to repent. We have sinned against the God of Mother Nature, and she's paying us back. And nobody said anything. But one Jewish rabbi said, look, uh, this could be God's judgment on us for embracing same-sex marriage. And the left just went apoplectic. So they're fine if you complain about their gods paying us back for trampling on their divinities. But don't you dare suggest that our God may have reason to be unhappy with us. Focal Point AFR Talk will be right back after the news. Stay with us.